when someone you've poured your heart and your soul and your time and still you know you haven't done everything right into turns around and looks at you and says I love you dad when they have the choice not to it's an amazing thing and it reminds me of our father God he gave us the free will to say you don't have to choose me but I hope you do and because I want you to come, here's all the things I'm doing. Here's everything I'm doing. So blessings on all fathers today here and anybody watching. Um, God's favor and peace and grace on you for the journey. If you are a estranged father and you've found yourself in a difficult circumstance, Ask God to restore and renew your relationship and help you and help you be who you need to be for your family. I realize family doesn't look like what it used to. Family keeps transitioning. They aren't all good transitions. So the reality in this room right here with the number of people we have, it's possible that 50% of you either didn't know your dad very well, dad was absent or emotionally absent or potentially abusive. It's 50%. So that's, that's, one, of those, that's one of those difficult scenarios because you're trying to understand what it is to have a relationship with Father God when you didn't really have a relationship with your physical father. And that requires healing and acknowledgement. Because even the best father here on earth struggles with doing things right. And just remember, circumstantially, forgiveness is... Even God gives us the grace to forgive. So if you have something in a, a relationship with your father, that there needs to be forgiveness into that relationship, begin praying into it. God doesn't say it's always going to feel fantastic. Just pray into it and give it the time and energy and prayer to see what God will do with that. Amen. So what we have this morning, what I'm doing is, um, I don't know if I did, I forgot last week, but um, we always read these little strips of thankfulness. So there's a, a jar in the back and um, these were all done last year and we've just about filled up that jar. So I got a few more weeks to go on this one and then I'll empty it and you can start filling up the new one. So when you come as many times as you feel like it, you can write down something you're thankful for, something you're encouraged by, and we'll share that with the people that come after you, just like we're sharing these. So this one says this week, since I've been at BBI, I have made some good friends. Thank you. You know, we got to baptize uh, nine people Wednesday night. Who got baptized? Amen. Yeah, give me a hand. Yay! And one of the things I notice when we baptize, it's like a family. You're all very supportive of each other and encouraging. And I imagine probably some of you, this is the first time, or maybe it's been a long time since you've actually known a family like this. So this one says, I got saved and I am getting baptized this Sunday. And that was from November. They actually dated it. This was from November, 2018. My best friend got baptized. It's interesting. I just grabbed them and we've got two baptisms. Um, this one is no one here. I want to make that clear because it says, thank you for my big red truck. It's not anyone here, <laughs> but I just wanted to. So, <laughs> but uh, that was that was in there. Yeah. 
I stayed in recovery when I wanted to quit. Thank you, Potter's House, for loving I stayed and I wanted to quit. Thank you, Potter's House, for loving. I think it means loving me enough to stay. Amen. So, thankful for that. It's a... Uh, I've had many people talk to me and say, I really, I'm trying to get, finish this recovery and I just, I don't want to stay here anymore because it just rubs on you, right? It rubs on all those edges, all those, ouch, 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 ouch. And then, you know, you probably don't end up in a house with all the people you get along with. They're all in the other house, right? <laughs> um, but uh, that's kind of family. You never get to room with the one you get along with. You always get to the room with the ones that's going to shape you. It's going to help grow you. Oh, sorry, my screen turned off. So we have been... There we go. So we've been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because we all like gifts. I'm a dad. It's Father's Day. I like gifts. It's cool. I didn't ask for a whole bunch, but I, I'm getting to the place in life. I'm getting to that, I don't know, maybe it's age and stage, where I'm just thankful to have all my family in one place. Because I realize that's not going to stay that way much longer. That eventually they're going to go off and start doing their own thing. And, and they aren't going to be hanging with me. So I won't be able to get frustrated about tripping over their clothes in the hallway and the fact that they didn't dump their trash can and stuff like that. And I'm starting to realize those are such little things that I'm just so glad to have them around. And I'm glad that they've, they're doing well and they're being responsible and they're growing and as such an amazing thing. So I love gifts. And the Holy Spirit provides gifts for us to use for ourselves and for others to grow the kingdom. And we've talked about how the gifts are broken up into segments where we have the Father's gift. And the father, Father's gift, those are our motivational giftings. That's how we're wired. Whether we're saved or not, we have these gifts from the Father. There are things that we do that just really fill us up. We really enjoy and we go, wow, this is really cool. That's the Father's gifting. And then there's the gift Jesus brings to the church, which is the pastors, the teachers, the prophets, the apostles, all the offices of the church. Jesus covers that and he brings all those. And then the Holy Spirit provides us with nine gifts identified in Corinthians that help us grow in our walk with Christ, help us encourage others, help us walk as a believer. And the reason this is so important is we have to understand head knowledge isn't the only thing that's going to help us in our walk. It has to grow into heart knowledge and it has to be, don't, don't worry, I love the sound of kids. They are awesome. I am never feel upstaged by children. I spent all of my early days getting say in being in church in children's ministry. Somebody figured out really quick that if you were if you put these broken people with kids, they feel unconditional love. And and I didn't realize while I was working on the kids, the kids were working on me. And the first time I had a, we were doing a little hand puppet show. And I had to learn that you don't when you do puppets, you don't move this because you got to move the whole mouth anyway and a couple of them cuddled up right next to me and I looked around thinking is this okay I mean I'm you know we're in we got to be careful about this stuff. I mean, the leaders there were like it's fine it'll be okay we're right here but they just snuggled up to me while I was telling a story and working a puppet and I just felt this warmth from the Holy Spirit saying, see, 
See, you are forgiven. You are restored. And then I found out, um, I found out later, um, I'd been saved, I don't know, a few months and they uh, had a VBS coming up and they asked me if I wanted to do VBS. And I said, well, sure. Why not? You know, you, yeah, you, you're new in the Lord. It's like people ask you stuff. You're like, yeah, okay, cool. Well, they gave me fifth grade boys. I didn't know that was the spot that they can't fill. <laughs> Uh, but the the end of the week, and boy, we had some challenges. But the end of the week, they all got free Bibles. Somebody donated all a bunch of Bibles. The end of the week, they're all sitting down on, on our, at our tent in the afternoon, all reading their Bibles, all all five of them. And the Holy Spirit nudged me and said, "I used you to do this. I used you to do this." And he started talking to me about more. But anyway, it's not all about me. That's all to say the kid noise don't bother me. Not at all. Um, because of the sound of life. So go to the slide that has all nine of them on there, Sarah, for me. There we go. So we've talked about a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, faith, Gifts of, the, gifts of healing, working of miracles, gifts of prophecy, and discerning of spirits is what we're going to be on today. You don't want to move yet. So the gifts become so important because there's so many things going on today. So many things fired at you. I was in um, a seminar when I used to be in sales, and they talked about the messages that come at us on a given day and they said generally and this was 30 years ago and they said most people are bombarded with about 2500 to 3000 messages a day from external sources tv radio work you know advertising of all kinds because it was a sales thing and they were talking about how to make your, you know, how to make your message more attractive and so on. But I thought about today. I wonder if today it's like 25,000. And, and, and sometimes you think there's so many messages in your head that don't belong to you. You feel like you're going crazy. Or you, you, you're, you're, you're struggling with depression and you haven't yet made the connection that it's because of the type of music maybe you listen to or the way you go about or certain things in your history and your family that you've never identified. And so you come and somebody prays for you and the Holy Spirit gives words of wisdom and words of knowledge to that person and suddenly they show you this is tied to this. And now you can begin to offer that to the Lord and, and, and see yourself restored and renewed. And then we talked about gifts of healing. Some people may operate in them more than others, but no one is exclusively gifted in healing because it's a gift of the Holy Spirit and it's available for everybody. And generally what will happen to me is somebody will talk about a circumstance they're really struggling with and I'll feel something well up inside of me and, and, and just a, a sense of righteousness that God's saying, I want to fix this. I want to restore this. I want to renew this and, and allows me to speak it over someone. And then, you know, sometimes they come back and say, hey, that situation is correct. Sometimes you never know, but you just operate in faith. Because one of the things that we struggle with in our country is because we have such good medicine, we have such good access to medicine right now, that a lot of times it's just, well, I'll just go to the doctor, you know, and that's okay. I'm nothing against going to the doctor. But I've, when I've traveled on missions work, a lot of times we'll pray for people and see dramatic things happen because they have no access to medicine. But I've also noticed as I get older, a gift of healing. Uh, I'll, I don't want to embarrass everybody, including myself, so I'll just say this. I had, um, I had earlier this week one of those uncomfortable things that happens to 
people starting to get my age that you still can operate fine, but you're just kind of uncomfortable. It's not enough to keep you home from work, but you're uncomfortable. So, and you ladies can understand that. I mean, you deal with that probably more than us guys do, but it was just one of those uncomfortable circumstances. And, and I woke up and I'm like, oh wow, this is way no fun. And, and, and I mean, I dealt with it. I did what I had to do, but it was just uncomfortable. So Wednesday night we came and one of the ladies who was getting baptized said she was having stomachs issues. I don't see her this morning, but that's okay. Um, and so we all gathered around and prayed for her. When we prayed for her, the uncomfortable part of my issue went away. And I didn't even realize it till later that night that I'm going, that doesn't hurt anymore. I have no discomfort. Don't you love that word the doctors say, or the, the, or the uh, medical commercials? If you have discomfort, and you're like, no, it's pain. Anybody ever had, you know, you're giving birth to a child, and the doctor says, do you feel discomfort? And you don't want to smack him? <laughs> no, it's a little beyond discomfort, doc. <laughs> we finally figured it out after two kids. The last, uh, my last kid was delivered by a woman. I think my wife enjoyed that better. It was just really cool. <laughs> yeah, she knew. She had kids. Um, but we were praying for that person and my discomfort went away. And I'm like, wow, Lord, it is so true that you provide for us as we make ourselves available to others. Now, don't get me wrong. God's not looking for a bunch of you to just throw yourself on the altar of ministry and run yourself ragged until you're so tired you don't know which direction you're going and think, oh, I'm doing it for the Lord. He doesn't need that. It's not what he's asking. He's asking for a healthy walk that provides balance for your life to have a job and a family and to continue to share the king and the kingdom in real ways for real people. But I was just like, wow, Lord, thank you so much. I would have been embarrassed to ask for prayer for what that was. You know, it's going to be one of those. We, I have an unnamed request. Could we pray? You know, but, but we're all praying and it just the discomfort went away. So God's, God's into the little things too, the healings that maybe you don't have a huge, I can't do this anymore, but maybe you've got a wounding in your heart. Maybe you've got a thing that you just can't release. Maybe you're trying to walk out of something and walk away from something that's been holding you back and you need healing. And the Holy Spirit knows what it is, and he'll use community to help you do that. And then working of miracles. We all love miracles. You love seeing miracles. You love, I, I mean, I just, I read through the gospel, and I think, wow, I, I want to see more of this. And then you realize what it costs to see more of that. But it has more to do with making ourselves available than figuring out all the little details that go into it. It's about saying, Lord, I'm willing to step out in faith and pray for the miraculous for somebody and watch their lives be transformed. And, and, and if you've been here a few weeks and you're like, man, we're really going over this a lot. And I might be just doing this for myself, but what I notice is the longer we walk with Christ, the less we're concerned about walking in the gifts of the Spirit. Because our walk gets comfortable. Our life gets comfortable. Now, I'm talking to a lot of people in recovery. You're like, no, my life is not that comfortable. No. So this is a great place to get this message. But for me, it's like, hey, I want to be this way all the time. I want to always be looking for what God's doing. 
And then we, last week we talked about gift of prophecy and how prophecy isn't a, a uh, isn't somebody with a long beard and eyebrows out to here and hair coming out of every place going, oh, that's not prophecy. Prophecy is God speaking to his people and sharing with them what he's doing and how he's going about it and, and what plans he has. And it may be a future telling, but it's always about here's what God's doing in this circumstance. And that brings us to discerning of spirits. So you can go to number seven, Sarah. It's slide number uh, nine. Oh, back up one. There we go. Maybe it's different on mine. So discerning of spirits. And these are all listed in 1 Corinthians 12. All these gifts. Enables the identification of which of the evil spirited is opposing people in their situations. Okay. And give you an idea. Let's say you have been, you know, you know, you know, Jesus, you know, you're loved, you know that God has plans for you, but you have this barrier that you just can't seem to get through. There's this thing you just can't get past. There's and and and, and you, you know you're forgiven, so you're always asking for forgiveness for it, but you just can't seem to get over it. You just can't seem to get past it. And it always brings these certain feelings along when it happens. And it may be something from your past that keeps coming back. Sometimes you might be trying to step in a new direction and you go to step and when you're, when you're trying to move that new direction, it's like, oh, you feel like you're being reeled back almost. You're being pulled back into something that, yeah, I don't want this. It's, it's possible, not always the case. I want to make sure I tell you, we aren't looking for demons under every rock. You know what I mean? They're out there, but I'm not, I'm not giving them all the time and attention. So what a discerning of spirits does is it allows for insight into what demonic influence you're dealing with. What is causing this? And let me, I'll give you a, um, kind of an understanding. Somebody shared this and it was really helpful. So, my, um, my wife, she wouldn't mind me sharing this. So, my wife, as a little girl, was always told by her parents, everyone, speak up. She was very soft-spoken. And she was always told, speak up, speak up, speak up, speak up, speak up. And when we got saved, because we got saved within a couple weeks of each other, and, and, um, and then we were going to church together. And, and I don't remember what the exact story. We were somewhere. And it's like every time she went to share something kingdom related, it was like her throat wanted to close up. And she'd get real emotional and real. F and I was praying for her. And I said, I said, what have you heard all your life about your speech? She goes, I've been told to speak up. I'm not assertive enough. That's what my, what my family always told me. You got to speak up. You're not assertive enough. What had happened is those words had caused a wounding that the enemy was allowed to reside in. Okay. I'm not saying you're possessed. I'm just saying that there was a pattern in her life when she went to assert authority that she was uncomfortable with because of the things she'd been told all her life as a little girl. And it was literally like the enemy had a hook. And when she'd try to step into these things and speak, he'd tug. And she'd be like, oh, oh, oh. and all this emotion would well up in her. So we prayed over that, what ended up being what you might call a curse. 
it's not a witch doctor going it was something that was spoken over and over again to her that wounded her in such a way that it was difficult for her to walk in health in that one area and we prayed over it and I can attest, since then, my wife has not had an issue with taking her God-given authority. In fact, she's getting better at it all the time. The guys laughed. You all know what I mean. But I give her that permission, too. I constantly say, you know, because when we were younger and married. OK, so I'm going to turn it around. So you see my the other side of this, this discerning of spirits. So we're and, and, and a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. We're doing something we had at the church we got saved in. Actually, no, we were here. We had already come here and we were preparing to plant a church. And the church had membership seminars. And we volunteered to help with the membership seminars. So we were prepping food and doing stuff. And, and I would, uh, you know, the pastors would come in and I'd, we'd have stuff laid out for them. And we were fussing at each other. No, I was fussing at her for how the table setup was going. And I started to say, we stepped away. And I don't remember if it was that day or if it was another day because I'm getting older. And so the days kind of went. But a circumstance came about very shortly after that I said, I started to say, how come every time we try and do something together, you question how I want to. And in mid-sentence, the Holy Spirit said, stop. Stop it. This is your issue, not your wife's. Now, you say, well, he just told you that? Well, no, I'm, I'm in the middle of a sentence and this warmth came over me and the turned to a softness and I realized it was my issue, not hers. And that I was harboring this spirit of control because I had always been afraid of things getting out of control. See, I was the one, I was the one when I was a kid, when I was a young man, I was the one that got all the drugs for my friends. I was the one who drove everybody. I was the one who made sure people got home. I was the one who controlled the circumstances, even in my addiction. He's so cute. He's so cute. And so the Holy Spirit wraps up in a little package the several things, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy and discerning of spirits and tells me it's my issue it's me I, I'm doing it and I had to confess right then and there I am so sorry in the midst of this conversation I am totally convicted that this is not your issue it's mine and she looked at me and said oh I know <laughs> she was gracious she just you know she was very kind about it she said I, I kind of thought that but I didn't want to say it so discerning of spirits will help you identify things that are coming at you supernaturally. Because, hey, when you want to walk with the king, there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be enemies. They don't call it the sword of the spirit for no reason. If you want a really good understanding of walking through enemy territory, with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, look at the passages where Jesus was led into the desert. Get this. Jesus gets baptized in water. And the Holy Spirit comes down and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And we see the father and the son and the Holy Spirit all at the same time. We hear the father, we see the dove of the Holy Spirit, and we see Christ. And immediately he is led into the desert to be tempted. That's not what I signed up for. Uh, I want to go, go do the fun stuff. 
you know. I didn't want to walk into the desert and be tempted. But Jesus walked through this whole scenario where the enemy pointed out all three specific things to challenge Christ in who God had already said he was. This is my beloved son. Well, Jesus, if you really want to be great, you got to have this. You got to have people, you know, you need, you need bread, you need wealth, you need to establish yourself. Oh, oh, if you want, you, you, need, you need to be recognized as a king. Look at these kingdoms I can give you. And Jesus turned them all down. He had a very clear understanding of what he was battling. Discerning of spirits will give you a very clear understanding. Now, I'm not saying the old, the devil made me do it. Do y'all realize there's only one devil, right? And he's not omnipotent or omnipresent he can't be everywhere in other words he can't be messing with me and messing with you at the same time but there are spiritual forces in unseen places that we battle against the bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood but against spiritual forces and wickedness in unseen places principalities and powers ruling authorities and these authorities are territorial. We see in the book of Daniel that these spiritual authorities have territories. Um, a, a friend of mine often says, you don't think it's an accident that the Nashville hockey team got called the Predators, do you? Because the joke, the, the, un, the unfunny joke was that Nashville was church planting graveyard for spirit-filled churches because there was a predatory spirit on spirit-filled churches to shut them down before they get started. So these, what discerning of spirits will do is help you discern and understand what you're battling and somebody can pray for you and understand something you're dealing with that goes beyond just the natural. Because there are things you come across and you're just like, why can't I get through this? Why can't I get past this? Why can't I get over this? Because there's help making sure you don't get over it. So you think about it, as you walk through, as we walk through these gifts, think about life without them. Because that's what we've been living. If, if you're not aware of any of these, you've been living life without them. Now you may have been having, they may have been happening to you without you realizing it, but you've been walking out your salvation all under your own strength without the guidance or the help of the Holy Spirit. Not because he's not with you, because you just don't recognize him. You don't understand how he works and what he does. And these nine gifts of the Spirit give you insight into what he wants to do for you. And how he wants to walk you through your circumstances and situations. And, and learning is fine, but you don't have to spend years in theology and, and masters in divinity to understand what the Holy Spirit's up to. You just need to walk it out every day. You read some of your Bible and you say, okay, Lord, how did you do that? What is that all about? What's going on here? And, and unfortunately, a lot of the reason we don't experience change is we don't like being challenged. We don't like, I mean, I, I know that routine. It's like, as you get older, it gets harder to keep your metabolism up and staying physically fit is more difficult and it requires more energy and more effort. And, um, you know, I put this thing on my wrist to challenge myself to make sure I walk enough every day. And I love to swim, and I try and swim as often as I can. Um, and it, it does pay off, but there are so many days where I'd rather just get off work and come home and sit on the couch. Or, you know, make dinner, don't mind making dinner, that's fine, kind of chill out and just relax. And, and, and I'm not saying those are bad things, but I'm saying spiritual walk is the same. It requires energy into it to get something out of it. 
And it's not all internal, it's not all physical. There's a whole spiritual dynamic that helps us grow and helps us understand what God's doing. Discerning of spirits will help us understand what we're fighting with. You have circumstances that you deal with, not just because of things you've done, but it's possibly because of things your parents did. We call them generational curses, and it's not that they intended to do things wrong, but I'll give you an example. Some of you may have seen this. Alcoholism seems to be something that travels through down family generations. And, and, and you'll notice it because you have relatives and, and other kinds of addictions, not just alcoholism, but you have relatives that have passed that down and you struggle with it, not just because of yourself, because there's also something else. It feels like almost a weight coming from your family regarding it. Jesus can break that. The Holy Spirit can identify that for you and say there's a generational issue here and you can break that. There's a generational issue in, um, in some families, really horrific, uh, child molestation. And you trace a family back and you see that it happened here, it happened here, it happened here. And unfortunately, that was in my family. And one of the things my wife and I did when we got married is we agreed and prayed that we would break that chain. And, and, and we've recently been made aware that God has been faithful to honor that because a circumstance that could have turned out very bad did not. Here's the other side. If it is something that, that you've had to deal with, if it is something that's been a family thing, it can stop with you. It can stop with you. You can stop at dead in its tracks and say, I'm not letting this transition into my family, into my kids. You can stop that by the power of Jesus. And discerning of spirits can tell you exactly what you're dealing with. And then you just do what God always wants us to do. You offer it to him and say, Lord, show me anything I need to do to make sure this is broken. And I know the first thing I need to do when I'm thinking about all of this process, walking with the Spirit, I need to ask the Lord to increase my heart and my passion to walk with the Spirit. Because it's so easy for us to get on autopilot. It's so easy for us to get, this is, life is good, I'm in a good place. No, I don't want to be the senior pastor of the potter's house. Absolutely not. I like my life. No, I don't want to pray for healing for that person. What if they don't get healed? No. No, I don't want to deal with this. I like wallowing in my stuff. No, I don't want to confess that I probably really shouldn't have said that. I'm the pastor. I'm not supposed to say stuff like that. But it's not a religious thing. It's not a, I'm going to ramp myself up. You know, I mean, I have to tell myself on Saturday sometimes, don't do anything. Just relax. You need to chill. And then what do I do? I get start doing book work. And then, <laughs> and then Patty calls me. It's okay. But even that, what I've learned is to have a Sabbath, to have a time of rest, you pick things you enjoy doing. Cause, because the reality is sometimes I can't stop every day. But I try and pick things I enjoy doing. 
the discerning of spirits can give you wisdom and insight to move in the right direction, to halt, to halt things that are coming at you, to break change from prior generations. All kinds of things can happen. And it's all for you. You get this. You don't have to stand up here for this to happen. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, I've come at this about 75 different ways this morning. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take uh, communion. Yay. We're going to have communion together. Cindy, you can go ahead and stop that. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, and then we've got a special treat for you. Um, I'm not going to play a song afterwards, but we're going to have a poem. So thank you very much. So... We honor...